Having spent a good chunk of time working with sine and cosine graphs, let's finish things off by graphing the tangent function. In order to do this, we need to again think back to our unit circle. Remember our terminal arm rotating around a unit circle. There were certain points where the triangle that was formed by the terminal arm had side lengths equal to zero. Those points were zero, pi over two, pi, and three pi over two. Let's try evaluating tangent at zero. So drawing out their terminal arm, we can see the triangle formed here has no opposite side length, as it has been squished down to zero. So assuming our hypotenuse is equal to one, as it always is with the unit circle, we can calculate tan of zero, which is opposite over adjacent, or in this case, zero over one, which equals zero. Next, we have tan of pi over two, which places our terminal arm here. When we form a triangle in this position, we see the adjacent side go to zero, and the opposite side is equal to the hypotenuse, which is one. This situation is not so simple. Since tangent always equals opposite over adjacent, our adjacent side is zero, we end up with an imaginary number, since we're dividing by zero. In other words, this point does not exist. We can call this undefined. For tan of pi, we see the same result as for tan of zero. Since the opposite side is squished again, opposite over adjacent gives us zero over negative one, which is just zero. Finally, we have tan of three pi over two. And as expected, this point also does not exist, as our adjacent side is once again zero. This leaves us with a divide by zero error. Also note, for tangent, it seems it only takes one half revolution around the unit circle before the values repeat again, contrary to sine and cosine, where it took one full revolution. So, what does this translate to on a graph? Well, let's make a table of values using our calculator and the tan function in order to get a better idea of what this function looks like. From our investigation of the unit circle, we already know the points at zero, pi over two, pi, and three pi over two. So let's fill those in. Zero and pi were equal to zero, and pi over two and three pi over two were imaginary which means we draw asymptotes at those points on the x-axis. Next, let's evaluate tangent in increments of pi over eight to see how the graph behaves as we close in on those asymptotes. So punching tan of pi over eight into a calculator gives us 0 0.414. Let's plot that point. Next, we have tan of two pi over eight, which is the same as tan of pi over four we may recognize this angle, which is equivalent to 45 degrees, where the side lengths are equal. Thus, tan of pi over four is equal to just one. Plotting along here, we have tan of three pi over eight, which is 2.414. It appears that the curve is exponentially growing as we approach this asymptote. Tan of four pi over eight is the same as tan of pi over two, which we already know is our asymptote. But let's see what's on the other side. Tan of five pi over eight is negative 2.414. Hmm, the same value, but negative. Thinking back to our unit circle, this actually does make sense, as we've now crossed into a new quadrant, but with negative coordinates. Tan of six pi over eight is equal to negative one, and tan of seven pi over eight is equal to negative 0.414. Plotting these points for the rest of the graph, reveals that we see a repeating pattern throughout. But what happens as we approach that asymptote at pi over two? Let's convert pi over two to a decimal, which is about 1.570796, and try plugging numbers closer and closer to pi over two. Let's start with 10 of 1.5. 10 of 1.5 gives us 14.1, Big jump from our previous value of 2.414. Next, let's try 10 of 1.57, which gives us 1,255. Whoa, a really big jump. Finally, let's try 1.5707, and we see that we get a whopping 10,381. 
Evidently, as we get closer and closer to that asymptote at pi over 2, our numbers jump up bigger and bigger. Thus, for our graph, we can just assume an almost straight line stretching to infinity as we approach the asymptote. Now that we know how the graph behaves at the endpoints, we can connect the dots to reveal a graph of the following shape. Note the following important properties. The period of this graph is pi, as we noted on the unit circle. We notice the asymptotes repeat every period, so we can say that there are asymptotes at x equals pi over 2 plus or minus n times pi, where n is an integer. And there is also an x-intercept at every period, or at x equals pi times n, where n is an integer.